So let me tell you about a small sulfur molecule called the MSP. The MSP is tremendously important in the mine environment, yet its production is exclusively restricted to photosynthetic organisms, namely phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons produce more than one billion ton of the MSP per year. And among phytoplanktons, dinoflagellates are very prolific producers. And that includes coral associated symbiodinium. In fact, because of the densities of symbiodiniums we found in reef building corals, the MSP concentrations in these organisms are incredibly high, the highest reported in any environment. But what do we care so much about this molecule? Well, after being produced by corals, the MSP is released into the surrounding seawater, where it's degraded into another sulfur-based compound called DMS. DMS is a gas, and a fraction of it is released into the atmosphere where it promotes cloud formation. It enhances the condensation of water molecule in the atmosphere. More clouds means more solar radiation deflected back into space, which ultimately alters the sea surface temperature at a local scale. So in contrast with phytoplankton blooms that are quite transient phenomenon, the coral reefs produce a very stable and steady DMSP and DMS flux to the atmosphere. Um, however, so far, not much is known about the DMSP production. We don't know if DMSP in corals vary throughout the day. We don't know if it varies throughout seasons. And we don't know what's happening during stressful events. So that was one of the objectives of my PhD, trying to elucidate what kind of environmental parameters are influencing these DMSP concentrations in corals. The, third, the first thing I looked at is the effect of um, light on DMSP concentrations. I used a very common reef building coral, Acropora milepora. We sampled nine colonies from a reef flat. We acclimatized them for more than two weeks in outdoor aquaria. And, when, and then we sampled them every two hours for 24 hours. That was not the smartest uh, sampling design I've ever designed. And the funny thing is that originally we were planning to sample them for two days in a row. So based on what we knew in phytoplankton cultures, um, in, in phytoplankton, DMSP production is enhanced by light. So we were, we were thinking that we will see pretty low level of the MSP during nighttime. That's the blue curve here. And a burst of the MSP production correlated with light and back to normal after sun sunset. But that's not at all what we observed. Instead, we saw pretty steady the MSP concentrations happening throughout the day. So that was. Um, quite a surprise, because when you look at dinoflagellate cultures, you clearly see this upregulation during daytime. So I didn't really know how to explain these results. Then we looked at what's happening during um, temperature stress. We compared Acropora milepora colonies kept at ambient temperature versus colonies that were subjected to thermal stress. And we sampled them repeatedly throughout thermal stress. We sampled them first when all the colonies were um, at 27 degrees. We sampled them again um, seven days later after a very slow ramp when the treatment reached 32. And then we sampled five days at 32 and 10 days at 32. My hypothesis was that as the coral bleach and uh, lose their DMSP producing symbiodinium, the level of DMSP in the corals will go down. That's a fairly reasonable assumption. Um, not surprisingly, the levels of symbiodinium did decrease during thermal stress, representing only 10% of their original densities after 10 days at 32 degrees. And when I looked at the symbiodinium cells using electron microscopy, that's a symbiodinium cell from the control uh, kept at 27 degrees. You can clearly see the chloroplast, the nucleus, all the, all the organelles are well preserved. And that's a cell 
um, from the treatments at 32 degrees. As you can see, um, there's not much um, cellular organization left. Um, the cell is highly damaged, and it's in a stage called necrotic. And that was not just two cells. I looked at hundreds of cells. Um, and after 10 days at 32 degrees, all the cells, 100% of the cells, were looking similar to this one. So we had 10% of the symbiodinium cells left, and 100% were damaged. So I was thinking that the drop in the MSP concentrations in these corals would be pretty massive. But that's not at all what we observed. Instead, we observed a twofold increase in the MSP concentrations in these corals. So at that time, I really didn't know how to explain that. You should have seen the face of one of my supervisor when I, when I showed him the results. Uh, so in order to try to understand what was going on, we decided to look at early life stages in corals that do not have symbiodinium cells yet. So we raised um, coral larvae in filtered seawater, and then we settled them um, in sterile six-well plates. And then I looked for the presence of photosynthetic organisms using five different DNA markers targeting the whole range of um, photosynthetic organisms. I used a very specific DNA markers targeting specifically symbiodinium and some more general ones targeting all the other clades of microalgae. But I was not able to find any photosynthetic organisms in, in, in these settled juveniles. However, we found that not only these juveniles had some DMSP in them, but the concentrations were increasing through time. And that was true at 27 degrees, but this process was even more pronounced at 32 degrees. And we looked at two different species, Acropora millepora and Acropora tenuis. So what you're seeing on these graphs is the production of DMSP in the complete absence of photosynthetic organisms. So in order to explain these results, we looked at DMSP biosynthesis. We know that in phytoplankton, DMSP is coming from the amino acid methionine, and there's four genes involved in the, in the biosynthetic process. When I started my PhD, none of these genes were known in any organisms. But by the time I got these results, um, the first set of candidate genes were isolated from a diatom. So the idea was to look in the coral genome to see if we could find these genes. And in this process, um, I was helped by Sylvain Foray um, that enabled this part of this work. So as, um, as I mentioned previously, here is methionine. At the bottom, we have the MSP. And here is the four steps, the four enzymatic steps um, required for the biosynthesis. And we looked for the presence of these four genes in the coral genome, and we were able to find two of them um, in two different coral genomes. And the sequences of these genes were quite different from um, the symbiodinium ones. Um, so that highly suggests that corals can produce the MSP on their own. But you might wonder why corals will produce a molecule that's already produced in large amounts by um, symbiodinium. I mentioned at the very beginning of the talk that the MSP is a very important molecule. Not only it's the precursor of DMS, that's a climate active molecule, but it has also many role on its own. The MSP is a very potent antioxidant. It reacts very quickly with hydroxyl radicals, which are produced in large amounts during um, stressful events. So it might be that during coral bleaching, um, corals will produce more DMSP to counteract um, the, the production of reactive oxygen species. DMSP is also an osmoprotectant, and it might be very useful to produce DMSP in, during salinity stress, for example, to cope with the, the difference in osmotic pressure during, the, during salinity stress. And finally, DMSP is a very potent signal molecule in the marine environment. It attracts all range of organisms, from bacteria to reef fishes, to seabirds. 
And we've shown recently that some species of bacteria are very strongly attracted to coral mucus. And we were able to find which compound in the coral mucus was attracting this bacteria. And of course, it was the MSP. So a few take-home messages from this talk. We show that the MSP concentrations increased during thermal stress in adult corals. We show that the same process happened in coral juveniles lacking any kind of photosynthetic organisms. We found two potential genes involved in the MSP biosynthesis in the coral genome. And together, that constitute the first report of this molecule by any animal. Publishing this work was quite a process. And um, there is, I would like to thank all my co-authors, but several people in the room helped me tremendously publishing this work. So I would like to thank especially Betty that read this manuscript a thousand times and drastically improved it throughout time. So without her, it won't have been, I won't have been able to publish it. And Sylvain did the tremendous work um, finding these gene autologues in coral genome. And finally, many people read this manuscript as well um, at various stages, and I would like to thank David Yellowlees and Hugo Harrison that helped me uh, putting this stuff together. And the Center of Excellence for not only this award, but to allow me to present this work today. Thank you very much.